and gentlemen, boys and girls, introducing the most enticing, innovative, all inspired, fluent, imaginative, balanced Call of Duty in the history of 17 years. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Call of Duty 17 Black Ops Cold War. I mean, it just clearly rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Just ended its alpha two weekends ago and was, well, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. The game was a fucking disaster. Now, before you start yelping, Oh, oh the game is out of the stain, trailer can they notice on the game because of Sledgehammer? You have to realize something about this franchise here. First off, the game is set to come out in a month and a half from now. Treyarch won't be able to revise the engine in that short amount of time. Rather, they can tune the weapon stats and that sort until then, but not major aspects like graphical fidelity of the game that were downgraded from Modern Warfare can be made up. And second off, we've had yearly releases since 2003, but there's no law mandating we really need that. I mean, hell, I've seen time and time again from the community that the release this year, Cold War, would have been okay to wait another year for a more finished product. And that's really in the hands of Activision, who's still making tens of millions per quarter off of Modern Warfare alone. I've been playing this franchise since I was at Squeaker, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern War, and I've seen the series' progression and degressions over the years, and I try my very hardest to keep an open mind, but Treyarch, the studio that once had all the innovation of Infinity War, has really lost the quality from the caliber we expected of the games ever since Black Ops 3. But alas, let's pick this game apart. Now I've heard from an inundation of sources and nearly all my mates that the time to kill and damage per second in Cold War is slower than Modern Warfare, but quicker than Black Ops 4, and they express dismay when I tell them how this cannot be, but take a look at the following, which seems to be the longest time to kill in any Call of Duty multiplayer game to date. Come on. Essentially, in a nutshell. <laughs> no, I'm a native hardcore player ever since Advanced Warfare, but I've played plenty of core and Black Ops 4 to note that the weapons of Cold War, especially in the shotgun and pistol categories, have a much slower time to kill than that of Black Ops 4. Take a look at the Cold War Spars 12, the S12 from Black Ops 2, and the SG12, a lot of 12s from Black Ops 4, all of which are weapons that are supposed to imitate a single action shotgun. Now, which kills the slowest and does the least amount of damage? Quite clear if you ask me, especially since the Spars 12 here has range inducing attachments on it. And how about pistols? Compare the Cold War's Diamante, Black Ops 2's B-23R, and Black Ops 4's Gayrison. The Diamante is egregious, it's pretty much laughable. Joe Biden's leg hair can kill quicker than that. Come on, man! And the 150 health concept just permeates these problems. I, in the first place, I never understood why we elevated from the classic 100 to 150 health in Black Ops 4, but it doesn't seem like Treyarch has any signs of changing this whatsoever. And this is where most of these time to kill issues arise. However, I will give Treyarch credit for, and say, sniping. <laughs> it has never felt this fluid since the blister and DSR from back in Black Ops 2. If you ever took a chance at sniping in Cold Wars Alpha, like, you would agree it was rather impeccable, right? Maybe even butter like Well, it turns out sniping mechanics in the Alpha were merely for statistical purposes and, well, will not be this way in the finished game. Hell, maybe not even in the fucking beta. I do not know why the hell they would nerf the sniping mechanics as the sniping from the Alpha, especially with the Pellington, just felt like classic arcade cards where your ADS speed was fast by default. Alas, it just feels like we just cannot have nice things anymore and proves that this game is a further step backwards to mechanics that we've been building on for the past eight years. Also, it looks like the MP5 meta from Modern Warfare is making a bold return. As the MP5, AK-74U, Stoner, and Krig are the primary weapons that feel as though they kill you in a, you know, reasonable amount of time. And the MP5, Christ alive, it makes you believe everyone only has 100 health. Now, I do not have hard numbers that Exclusive Ace has, but going off of precedent, the balance is all over the place, and this is the primary deterrent this game poses to me. 
Now our next items of discussion are maps, models, and movement. And what better way to transition than to pose one imperative question. What the fuck is this? I'm sure you're not paying $60 for exosliding, dolphin diving, crab demons lurking around the map. But from a perspective, this sliding distance and speed was actually nerfed from the pre-alpha streamers got to go to. Can you believe that? Since Treyarch loves nerfing things so bloody much, I would be fine with the power slides being gone. But then again, back in the 70s, everyone and their mothers were snorting up cocaine, so I suppose Treyarch tried to keep this true to life. And whilst we're on the topic about aesthetics, why does it seem that the graphics are a mixture of photo-scanned objects juxtaposed with Lego-sized character and weapon models? Everyone can tell this game looks far objectively worse on the eyes than Modern Warfare did. The same passion for intricate and imaginative weapon design is vastly absent, and as lead Infinity Ward animation director Mark Gisbury put it, you simply could not replicate Modern Warfare's models, regardless if you love the game or not. Hey, the animations in this game are going to be yeah, awesome. These, no one can touch these. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we looking at? In terms of map design, you could clearly tell that track was behind this. Most maps are three lanes, some four, and others clusterfucks. Now, there is plenty of cover, and if you hated doors and love oversaturated bright colors, this game is the one for you. What I personally adore about the maps is that there are far fewer safe areas for little gremlins to look around in the dark corners, but do not misquote me, they are still there. And since this is a Treyarch game, expect the sixth remake of Nuketown as well. Also, whilst we're on the topic of maps, the vehicles in this game have similar mechanics to Blackout, where sticks control acceleration and tuning rather than your bumpers did from Modern Warfare. Snowmobiles were rather easy to destroy, but then there are the tanks. Now, the best part about the tanks is that you cannot flick your cannon about on a dime. There's some momentum before you can turn your cannon. And the 50 cal is relatively bounced to the cannon, but let me just say that the amount of damage dealt by the cockpit launchers that the tank can absorb is not enough. You practically need seven players to shoot the bloody thing before it goes down. Also, there's a nice implementation that Treyarch did with shooting weapons as the driver or pilot of vehicles. Though this can hardly seem practical given that you have to multitask quite a bit, and the vehicle loses control of itself when you do this. So here we are, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The betas this week, and let's just hope that the several areas that needed fixing receive the attention they deserve. It's a reboot that should not have been conceived of so soon, following in the trails of Modern Warfare's reboot of Infinity Ward's renowned original trilogy. Now the true question on the game is this, what do you think about the state of Black Ops Cold War? What would you like to see changed? Do you intend on getting it? And was this absolute jewel of a game <laughs> released too soon? Let me know down below, and with the hopes I will not vanish into the shadows for another nine months, I'm Cyblox, you're you, and I'm signing out.